This video is about Go and User Flash and how to integrate it into my simple Pico RV32 Mini SoC project running on the Tang Nano 9K FPGA development board. We'll see how to read it, write it, and erase it using Goen's Flash Controller Soft IP Block available from the Goen IDE. This will show some advantages and disadvantages of using this controller to access the flash, and we'll use the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope to see the flash transactions. So what is User Flash? It's a flash integrated into some Goen FPGAs and intended for application rather than FPGA configuration use. Not all Goen FPGAs have User Flash. The FPGA on the Tang Nano 20K has none, but the FPGA on the Tang Nano 9K integrates Flash 608K, giving 76 kilobytes of User Flash. So we'll be using the Tang Nano 9K today. Flash 608K is 32 bits wide and organized into 304 rows by 64 columns. The page size for erasing is 2 kilobytes. The Goen documentation contains some useful information, but can also be a bit hard to understand and can be misleading. Here's the Goen IDE. You can see that Goen released a new version. You can see it here, and they released it for both Linux and Windows. Today we're using Windows because that's where the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope works. To add user flash to your project, you use the IP core generator tool, and there's two ways to do it. If you select from the hard module list here, you can pick user flash, and this would instantiate the raw hardware of the flash. If you use this method, you'd have to write your own controller in Verilog, and you'd interface it to this interface, which is hard to see in this picture, but it's clockless. This is asynchronous. But again, if you use this method, you have to write your own controller. The alternative, is to go to memory control here and instantiate the, the Go and Flash controller. And this gives you both the Flash itself and also a simplified controller interface. This one's synchronous, it takes a clock, and we can look at that in the Verilog. But first, let's dive into the Go and Flash controller interface. It's pretty easy to use. Connect an active low reset and a clock, which can be no faster than 50 megahertz. The flash is 32 bits wide, so 608k bits is 19k words. Selecting a word requires 15 address bits. Connect them starting with address bit 2, since bits 0 and 1 don't apply to words. The high order bits form the row address, and the rest form the column address. If the transaction is a write, assert write enable. If it's a page erase, assert erase enable. For reads, assert neither. When all of these inputs are stable, assert start flag for one cycle. Then, wait for the flash to assert the done flag. This indicates that the operation is complete. At this point, the output data is stable for reads. The flash asserts the done flag for two cycles. So, the main thing needed is a state machine to assert the start flag and then await the done flag. We can look at the Verilog for that. Here's the Verilog file for the user flash integration. Remember that our Pico RV32 integration top level asserts a select signal to a target when it's going to do a transaction to it, and then waits for that target to assert a ready signal. Now, let's scroll down and see what we can see. The first interesting thing is write enable. So you can see that it's going to be asserted only when all four bits of the write strobes are ones. And that means we're supporting only 32-bit writes to the flash, and that's because narrower writes don't make sense for a 32-bit flash. We use a bit of a trick for erasing. Basically, erase enable is asserted only for byte-wide writes to word-aligned addresses. And so we accomplish that by assigning erase enable to write strobe equal equal one. And so this means to erase a page, you, you set the address to some address within the page and then do a, a byte-wide write to that address and make sure that that address is word-aligned. And then finally, we see here that the ready signal, going back to the top level, is asserted only when state is equal to done. So next, we need to look at the state machine. The state machine is here, and it's pretty simple. So in, in the idle state, we're just waiting for the top level to assert the select signal. And when we see that, we set the state, the next state to be acting, and also set the start flag to be 1 in order to cause the flash to begin the operation. So then in the acting state, what we're basically waiting for is the flash to assert the done flag. And so when we see that, we set the next state to done, and also meanwhile have, have set the start flag back to zero. 
So we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll loop in this state until we see the done flag. And then, and then the done state just resets the state to idle, and then it repeats. Finally, here at the bottom of this file, we see the instantiation of the Go and Flash controller. And this is where we make the connections that we previously described. So you can see this module is really quite simple. Now let's take a quick look at the top level. And there we see the typical signals for a target. So the user flash select data and ready signals that are managed like for any target. And then scrolling down, we see where the address map is set. So the user flash is mapped from hex two followed by four zeros to hex three, three, zero, zero, zero. So there's the select being set for that. And mem ready is handled in the usual way. So it's asserted if mem valid is true and any of the targets are expressing or asserting they're ready. And similarly, the memr data is set according to which target was selected. And finally, here's the instantiation of the user flash module we just talked about. So that's how the user flash works. Now maybe we can take a look at it in action. Let's do a build so you can see how I do it. First, I'm going to enable the file for the Gowan analysis oscilloscope so I don't forget to do it. And then I installed the Windows subsystem for Linux to get RISC-V tools. So that's how I'm going to build the software. So that's in directory C code. So if I go there and just type make, that builds everything we need. And then I can put that window aside and go back to here and rebuild the project, which takes a little while. And now that's done. So we can go to process and take a quick look at the place and route report. And I'll just scroll down here and pause for a minute. And you can look at the resource utilization if you want. You can pause the video, but I'll close that and then pick up the timing analysis report that we see is all blue. And I'll scroll that, scroll down a little bit there and pause as well. And at this point, we're ready to run. So we do that by loading, like so, programming the FPGA, and then make that go away. And then we'll go to Tools, Go and Analysis Oscilloscope and bring that up and make sure that this is set to that F2CH setting and we can start it running. And then we have to bring our terminal emulation window to the front where I have a new command interpreter. So I type HE and that shows me the available commands. And now to do an operation to the flash, well, let's do a read. So I can do read word and then address 20000. And that will read the first word of the flash and should trigger the go and analysis oscilloscope, which it looks like it did. So let's see, we can move this over a little bit and move this over a little bit. And I'm going to zoom out one, one step. And so now we can see that when memvalid goes high, the select signal to the flash also goes high. And then one clock later, the state machine asserts the start flag. And then after that, the state machine has to sit around waiting for the done flag. And when it sees the done flag, it, it asserts uh, the, the ready signal. And so the total time for this read transaction looks like it went from about clock three to, I don't know, clock 18-ish. And so what's that, like 15 clocks? And that begins to show one of the disadvantages of the Gowan controller. It's designed to work at 50 megahertz, and it uses the same number of clocks regardless of the clock speed. So we're, we happen to be running at 5.4 megahertz. So this is extremely wasteful in performance. And there's not much you can do about that short of trying to edit the output of the, the encrypted IP block, which might be possible in some limited way, but it's not something you really want to do. But even at 50 megahertz, this seems like quite a few clock cycles to me. I would think that you could read this flash in four or five. I might have to write my own controller to find out. But anyway, it looks like it has quite poor performance. Now let's do some more reads. So let's read the last word of the first page, which would be 207FC, I think. So you can see there's something previously written to there. And then I want to read the first word of the second page, 20800, and there's something written there. So now let's erase the first page. And I have a command erase flash that, that I could do that directly, but I want to do it more directly. So if you do a byte write to an address within the page that's word aligned, that will erase that page of flash. And so the value that you write doesn't matter. So I do that right, 
And now if I read those same addresses, I see, oops, I did the wrong address. If I read those same addresses, you see that that is zero now. So it's been erased. The erase state is zero. And so similarly, the uh, last word of the page, 207F, I think that's right, should be zero now. And then the next one should be the first word in the second page. So 20800, and that one's not erased. So you see we erased exactly one page. Now to do a write, I would do word write to an address, say the first, the first word of the flash, and write it to say 44332211. And so now, if I read that, 20000, you can see that that write worked. And you can also see the Goan analysis oscilloscope um, responding. And so let's actually do the write again. Well, let's, do, let's do a write to somewhere else. So write word to 0, I don't know, 110, and just anything we want to there. And look at the Goan analysis oscilloscope. And now, look at the start flag. And notice we don't see done. So let's zoom out until we do. And keep keep going, keep going, keep going. In fact, I'm going to zoom, I'm going to zoom all the way out. And so now we see that that write, that write operation took something like 2,500 clock cycles. So that also seems pretty slow for, for this kind of flash. The writes are going to be much, much slower than the reads, but I'm surprised that it's that much slower. And in fact, the page erases take so long that the go and analysis oscilloscope can't capture the whole thing. It does, there's not enough memory for it to use. So anyway, that's the go and user flash in action. I'll conclude our brief tour of the go and flash controller with the user flash here. You can see it is easy to use, but perhaps has performance issues. See below for a link to the GitHub project, and be sure to check out the Git branch Goen user flash. Also, I created a playlist for videos about the Pico RV32 Mini SoC. See those videos for more background information. And finally, I'll put a link to a video below that gives a more complete example of instantiation using the Goen IP core generator. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.